Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Land Cruiser Build. Today we're finally taking a break from the engine repairs and working on the suspension. Some of you may know that I've had this three and a half inch Dobbinson's kit just waiting to be installed and we're finally getting around to that today. This should make a huge difference in the ride quality since we're replacing old worn out coils, blown shocks, and missing bushings. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we've been putting some miles on the Land Cruiser. We got about 130 miles of city driving on this new engine now. And I'm starting to notice some things that I really need to fix immediately, sooner rather than later is what I mean. And the top of the list right now is the suspension. All the bushings in the shocks and all the shocks themselves are blown. So we do have this Dobbinson's kit just sitting around. Haven't installed it yet because I've been busy with the engine, but now I'm not busy with the engine and we can get the Dobbinson's kit installed. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I actually reached out to David Otero on I Hate Mud to figure out what the best suspension setup was. And we decided on the three and a half inch VT coils and the six inch IMS shocks. And as you can see, these are gonna be quite an upgrade compared to what we had on there. We had some blown nitro chargers and some really old 850s. I think these are 850Js. Now there's a lot more to lifting the Land Cruiser than just installing the shocks and the coils and then you're done. We're going to throw a bunch of other measurements off the second we lift this thing three and a half inches. We're not gonna have the correct caster. We're going to stretch the brake lines past where they're supposed to be. We're going to have the pan hard bar all wrong. It's gonna steer terribly. So this is just part one of a new series on the channel, just installing the shocks and the coils. Also, do you guys remember all the work we did in the last video with those transmission lines down here? Well, it looks to me as if the radiator leaks under pressure, so now we have to fix that too. But, I mean, as I said today, we're gonna focus on the suspension, but down the road, everything I did in the last video has to come back out, get the radiator replaced. I actually didn't know that this truck had these poly trim spacers or the 850s on it. I knew that it had some sort of lift from the previous owner because it had a box of OME coils in the trunk when I bought it. So I figured that they just never got installed. So maybe the PO was testing different suspension setups or something. I don't know. But we're removing these spacers as I don't think we'll need them with the Dobbinson's coils. These things are pretty beefy compared to the OMEs and even with spring compressors, I still needed to free up as much room as possible by removing brake lines and anything else in the way. And luckily my sway bar was already disconnected which would definitely have to come off to make room. Ah, 
Gotcha. Oh, I thought I put it in there upside down for a second. We just finished up the front end and I'm not sure if you can tell on camera, but the front is definitely a little higher than the rear now. So I did forget to measure the front clearance beforehand, but the rear right now is not finished and it is at 38 and 7 eighths and the front is at 39 and 9 sixteenths. So we got somewhere around three quarters of an inch of lift. Now the kit that was on there was already a two inch OME lift with a spacer. So we did get a bit more lift off this Dobinson's kit here, which isn't what we were going for. We weren't going for some crazy big lift. We were just going for new, better suspension. So as you can see, the, the coils are in there and the shocks are in there. They look really good. Still got to put the Dobinson sticker on that. And you know, it's going to be quite the upgrade as compared to these old uh, sorry for the mess guys we are still unpacking from the move but quite the upgrade compared to these old parts that we had here um, i'll probably sell these coils but definitely going to throw those uh, shocks in the trash so now we need to move on to the rear end we're going to be doing the exact same thing i'm definitely going to have to I'm probably going to have to remove the sway bar or at least loosen the brackets um, probably do something about those brake lines and then drop this axle as low as I possibly can to get the new coils and shocks in. We have the rear axle kind of just freely hanging right now and I just want to show you guys what happens when you neglect bushings forever. The previous owners left the bushing on the shocks just blown out and you can see that bracket right there, that standoff for the shock is completely eaten away. So that's another thing that we're going to have to fix later, I guess. Right now we're just going to focus on the lift and just add that to the list of things on the build. So we can get started on installing the shocks and coils now, but just got to keep that in the back of our mind that that's going to have to be replaced down the line. You never know what kind of things you're going to find on an old project truck or vehicle like this. This is not going to be the first issue that we find. Obviously it's not. And it's not going to be the last issue that we find. As we continue building this thing, there's going to be plenty of things that pop up just like this that we're going to have to fix. And that's just the nature of the beast. What you're looking at here is thousands of miles of metal contact from the lower shock mount hitting the axle shock shock mount here with no bushings. Eventually this would have eaten all the way through and now our new bushings don't have a smooth surface to ride on. Will this eventually fail and snap off? I doubt it. But is it something that I'm going to want to fix? Of course it is. So if you've built an 80 in the past or come across an issue like this on any of your previous builds, let me know what you did in the comments below. Did you just replace it with an aftermarket mount or did you try to retain the factory setup? These do sit pretty low anyway, so it wouldn't be terrible to relocate it and that's kind of what I'm leaning towards, but let me know in the comments.
If you've ever installed a lift kit on a vehicle that has an LSPV, then you may have noticed in those last clips that something's kind of going on with the LSPV lift bracket that I got from Dobinson's uh, in this kit. Now, if I look at their website, um, their LSPV that's attached to their lift bracket kind of goes off at a 90 and mine is just vertical up and down. So I don't know if on later model Land Cruisers they change the way that bracket mounts, but you'll see that mine is not only uh, conflicting with the bracket itself, but it's also hitting that upper link mount. So I'm gonna have to figure out something with the LSPV. I might just delete it like I did on my pickup, and I had no issues with that. And I see a lot of people doing that on these Land Cruisers as well. So on the off chance that an employee from Dobinson's is watching this video, please let me know in the comments if you can help me out with this bracket or at least point me in the right direction to get the right one. But as far as the lift goes, we got a little bit of lift as you saw in those previous clips from these three and a half inch springs. Again, we're not in this for the lift, we're in this for the upgraded suspension. The lift is just an added bonus that we can take advantage of to clear a larger tire. We still have to change the brake lines out, figure out the LSPV, we have to get the caster corrected, fix the pan hard angle, and a bunch of other things before we can make this thing street worthy. So I'm not gonna test drive it in this video, not to mention it has no brake fluid anymore and it has the radiator leak too. But yeah, stage one complete, coils and shocks installed. As always guys, thank you for sticking around and watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.